Yes, you're all wondering what it is. It's a photo of myself. No, it's not. It's a mirror. Look at this, what the Bible says about a mirror. In James, it says this. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man or a woman who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away immediately, forgets what he looks like. But the person who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and, <laughs> and continues to do it, not forgetting what he's heard, he will be blessed in what he does. Friends, when's the last time, you know, you looked at the mirror? When's the last time you were honest with yourself? Are you doing what you already know? You're looking at the Word of God, hearing the Word of God day after day, Sunday after Sunday. But then we walk away and we forget, we don't apply what's in our life. The Bible says, if you look intently, keep on looking, keep on applying, it says you will be blessed. Well, I want to be that blessed person. Quickly, I feel like God showed me some things that I needed to do as a healing evangelist to receive my healing. And I think perhaps God wants to talk to somebody here about that for you. You know, the first thing God said to me is, Andrew, seek me. You know, it says, but seek first the kingdom of righteousness and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You know, when God's in the center of something, it's like there's no need to worry. You know, fear goes. Everything else disappears. The Bible says when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll fear no evil. Why? Because God is with you. He is walking with you. Seeking God is the key. Coming to church is not seeking God necessarily. I mean, it is. But what God is saying is, when's the last time you actually went looking for Him beyond church? Um, I'm a romantic. Um, have, you ever, have you ever walked along the beach or wherever you are, you're praying, you're praying, but your mind drifts? So you're praying, praying, God, 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 I'm, 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 I'm the worst at that. I'm praying about something, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking about something else. You see, when I met Janine, let me just tell you how awesome I am. When I met Janine, I really liked her. Our first date, I did something really special. I went and I, um, I got a, a, a beautiful evening dress. I was like 26. It cost me $300 back then. It was like more money than I'd ever spent on anything. And so I put it in a box. I wrote a poem. I put the poem in a box, had a big black bow over it. My friend dressed up with a tuxedo, knocked on her door, gave it to her as my first date. Said, I'll pick you up at 7 o'clock. I hired a limousine. I wasn't in the limousine to pick her up at 7 o'clock, hoping she'd hop in it. In the limousine was two dozen red roses. The limousine came and picked me up, and we went out for dinner at a, at a fine dining restaurant. Then we went to a show where Julio Iglesias was singing. All the girls I've loved before, in and out and round my door. And Janine was going, oh, she had the right dress. I you know, and, and I was really excited. And then, and then this was happening, and then we went for supper, and we were having a coffee. It was a beautiful lounge um, place. There was over 300 people easily in the lounge. The lead singer of the musical Cats was my best friend. She comes up to our table. Everybody knew who she was. And she said, are you Miss Janine Gray? That was Janine's maiden name. And she goes, yes. And she said, would you accompany me to the grand piano? And my friend is a um, concert pianist for the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, and he was playing. And the poem that I wrote wasn't a poem. It was a song. And she sung it in front of all the people. And Janine said, if I had have said asked her on the first date to marry her, she would have said yes. 
It worked. It worked. You got to wheel, wheel her in, man. She was way too good for me. I had to do all my tricks. Every year I've tried to do something. Because the Bible says don't lose your first love. Why does it say that? Because you can. The hardest thing for me oftentimes as a pastor is when you're counseling a husband and a wife and you're trying to convince him that she's still great. And you're trying to convince her that she, he's still awesome. But they've lost their first love. They've lost the spark. They haven't seeked. They haven't courted each other. I'm praying and I'm thinking about our wedding anniversary. And God says to me, what about me? I said, God, what about you? He said, Why, when's the last time you actually sought me? I said, God, I'm good. I'm in church more times than most. I pray every morning. He said, when's the last time you really sought me? God took me back to my Bible college days. He took me back to my Bible college when I was 19 years old, holding the Bible for the first time, somebody was teaching me the Word of God. I remember day after day weeping as the Bible was explained to me. I remember stealing the chapel key. We had a beautiful chapel. And I would take my sleeping bag and my pillow. And I would sleep in the chapel. Because I just wanted him to know that he knew that I knew I was looking for him. I came home to Janine and I was thinking to myself, this is a little bit awkward, baby. But I said, I don't want to sleep with you tonight. She said, really? What, what's going on? She, I said, darling, I want to sleep in church. I want to sleep in our chapel. She said, why? And I said, well, I just want him to know I'm looking for him. She said, don't you think that's strange? I said, yeah. But I said, I don't care. I'm desperate. I've got a friend who looks after their church. I felt like a, a criminal. You know, I, after I tucked all my kids in, I kind of snuck into church. I opened the chapel, got my sleeping bag and my pillow. Friends, I wish I had a, to tell you that I saw an angel that night. I wish I could tell you that I heard the audible voice of God saying that everything was going to be okay. I didn't even sleep that good. But I want you to know that I'm committed and we should be committed to look for Him. When's the last time you got carried away in the presence of God? When's the last time you said, you know what, even being in church, I'm just going to linger on the altar. I'm just going to linger and stay. I'm going to court, I'm going to look for God. Because when God is in the center, there's no reason to fear. God's talking to me. He said, Andrew, the first thing that you need to do is to come into my presence. The sec second thing is to surround yourself. You know, it says in Psalm 1, blessed is the one who does not walk in the, s walk in the step of the wicked, Stand in the way of the sinners or sit in the, in the company of mockers. But delights his law in the Lord of the Lord day and meditates on it day and night. That's what Janine was doing. The person is like a tree planted beside streams of water and yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever they do prospers. And I love that, that whatever you do prospers. You know what he's actually saying? He's saying, don't stand in the seat of, of mockers. Don't hang around ungodly people. I mean, we don't take advice from the ungodly. We witness to the ungodly. We don't take counsel from them. We, we, we witness to them. It's a difference. But, you know, when I married Janine, the story's not all about Janine, but when I married Janine, it was, it was so different. Like, at our, my Christmas... And my family and Janine's Christmas and her family, like when I met Janine, like all her family served God. That it was like going to the Waltons. They all holding hands. They all loved each other. They're all praying for it. My family is like the mafia. <laughs> I'm not, it's like, hey, what's going on? You know, it's like, it's the mafia. 
Janine's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. You know, it's like, I'm like, who are you? It was like an absolute night and day experience. If I told my family that I had lumps on my neck, like, my family are crazy. Like, one of my brothers, he would say, oh, yeah, Auntie June. Yeah, she had only two lumps, and she lasted six weeks. Oh, don't get your hopes up, Andrew. I mean, that conversation actually could happen. Has anybody got a crazy family member? That conversation's actually going to happen. And no, no, no. It doesn't even stop there. Then they'll ring. Then they'll ring every other family member. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Telling them, hey, Andrew's got a lump. He's going to die. <laughs> you know it's true. Why tell? Don't tell negative people a bad report expecting a positive response. Why are you fighting witchcraft? That word's like witchcraft. Why are you fighting it? When you've created it. You're the one who's told negative people a negative report expecting a positive result. It's not going to happen. And then you're wondering why you're fighting, fighting, fighting for your miracle when you're the one who created it. You're the one who's created the tension. More trouble's coming your way. Because of your silliness. The Bible says the power of life and death and what? In your words. Who told you that prayer doesn't have power? Who told you reading the word of God was a preference? That coming to church was some kind of option? Prayer has got power. The word of God has transformed everything in your life. Coming to church is the house of God, the house of miracles. It's family. The devil tries to tempt us, take us away, pull us away, tell people bad reports, expecting a different result. It's insanity. Tell godly people. That's why the Bible, I think, says when you're sick, come to church. Come to the rock church. Let them elders. Why elders? Because they are proven. They are godly people. Let them anoint you with oil. Why? Because they've got faith inside of you. Faith inside of them. They're not going to speak a negative report. They're going to say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. They're going to say, something's going to turn for you. Something's going to shift for you. Something's going to, this is the day. They're going to say it. They're going to believe. They're going to stretch. Come to church. Keep your mouth closed for those negative people. But tell godly people so that they can pray in faith. Mm, I feel like I'm getting excited now. I wonder if the worship team could come and join me. You know, I, I talked about it. Truly I say to this one, truly I say, if anyone says to the mountain, says to the mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say, it will happen for them. Romans 10 verse 9 it says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Great verses. You know when it says, I tell the truth, anyone who says to the mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt, but believes what they say. Just underscoring again, that sometimes your words are as powerful as prayer. It doesn't say pray to the mountain. It says, speak to the mountain. You know, truly, I'm preaching to myself. I went to the mirror. The mirror is pretty powerful, isn't it? I remember looking at the lumps. Have you ever done it? Look at a lump, you go, man, it's pretty big, isn't it? It's annoying. I started speaking to that mirror. Started saying to it, mountain move. I'm telling you, cancer, get off me. Every lump, every, every little bump in the name of Jesus, I declare it healed. I couldn't wait to go to bed. Have you ever, have you ever prayed at night and you're waking up and you just like want to go to the mirror to see? 
how it's gone. You know, the first day, there was, I didn't feel like there was any change. But that didn't stop me. Sometimes you have to do what you already know, church. Keep on praying. Keep on declaring that mountain's going to move. Keep on praying. Speak to it. Speak to it. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing over my body. I started saying scriptures over myself. Digging the well, digging the well, digging the well again. Came to church. Took the altar call. I'm the healing evangelist. Who cares? Took the altar call for healing. Got my elders to pray for me. And pastors, I could care less. Well, what will people think? I don't care. I just want to be healed. I wonder if somebody in this church wants to be healed tonight. Speak to the mountain. It says if you believe. This morning I was talking about belief. What do we believe? I'm telling you, God can do it. He's amazing. They did the biopsy. So the lump was still there. It was smaller. They did the biopsy. They said, you know, there's no cancer. I said, yeah, of course. I'm a healing evangelist. Amen. Rang up Janine. Fine. She said, oh, I knew it would be fine. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know, we all go through things, huh? We just, we are. We all, We will. But I kind of feel like sometimes, church, listen, let me just be Pastor Andrew today. If we just did what we already knew, we'd be way ahead of the curve. Just to dig that well again. What do I know about healing? What do I know about God? Just start practicing. Practicing doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you're just trying. Trying to get better. But I know that God's going to do something awesome. You know, tonight, we've got time. You know, we always do this before we pray for miracles. Because we're asking God for a miracle. That's where our help comes from. But isn't it true that when we're asking God for help, help in our marriage, help in our finances, help in our physical state, that we should already know where we're at with God. So many people come to me and say, Andrew, I want God to do a miracle in my life. I go, man, that's so awesome. I said, when's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you know God? When's the, do you know Him? They go, no, we don't know Him. I said, well, let's just get that worked out first. And then let's ask God for the miracle. Honestly, church, when's the last time you just looked in the mirror and you're honest with yourself? Just honest. Just looked in the mirror and asked the question, how are you going? I'm telling you, it's the most powerful thing that you can do. It's called self-examination. Say, God, are me and you good? He'll talk to you. He wants you to be good. Good in the sense He wants to, He wants you to know Him. He wants you to find him, court him. He wants to talk to you. He wants to help you. Even if you're going through a hard time, he wants to stand right beside you. So you don't have fear. So you don't have anxiety, worries. The peace of God's a promise for his children. Come on, before we pray for your miracle, can we just look in the mirror? Can we just look inside our souls and just say, how am I doing? And I believe that God will talk to you. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to, in a moment, just ask you to close your eyes. I want to explain what's going to happen so you don't feel tricked in any way. But when you close your eyes, isn't it true that your, your soul and your thoughts are illuminated, they come alive? And I want you to ask this question to your soul. Am I in relationship with God? It's an honest question. God will talk to you. No, no doubt in my mind. There may not be like an audible voice booming down from heaven, but certainly there'd be a stirring, a prompting inside your soul. And I want you to respond to that. That's God's calling. But I know, I know I've been around too long that the devil 
does not want you to win. He'll whisper to you. It'll be just a little whisper saying, don't do it. Don't you do it. Don't lift your hand. Don't give your life to Christ. Don't rededicate your life to the Lord. But you don't listen to the devil, not today. Say, devil, get off. I'm going to practice what I know. I'm going to come back to a good God. I'm going to, my marriage is going to be healed. My life is going to turn around. Everything's about to change. Devil, get off in the name of Jesus. As you're pondering that thought, I'm going to pray for you. Even if you're watching online, I want you to do this. At the end of the prayer, just where you're sitting, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord or pray a prayer asking Christ to come into your life, I want you to lift your hand. I'll see it. I ask you to put it down. Then all together, we're going to pray a prayer so you don't feel alone or embarrassed. But I'm believing that God sees everything, every heart today. So come on, friends. Why don't we just do that right now? Just close your eyes. Pray that prayer. Am I in relationship with God? God's talking. For some people, even just to close your eyes and to look in the mirror, as it were, to look inside your soul would be a hard thing, but I want you to do it. You've come this far. Let me pray for you as you think about that, pray about that. God, I thank you for every new person who's here today. Maybe you've been here first time, second time. Maybe visiting from another church, watching online. You're saying, Andrew, it's true. I know about God, but if I'm honest, I'm not in a relationship with Him. But something has to turn for me. When I was praying about these meetings, God showed me clearly that there were numerous people here saying, I cannot have another year like last year. Something has to turn for me. And you know the point of difference is you're away from God, but you need to come back. Or maybe you're saying, Andrew, it is sin that's separating me from God. A wrong relationship, a secret sin. A sin that maybe nobody else would know about, but God sees everything. Or maybe you hear you say, Andrew, if I was to face death like you had to, when you had leukemia as a teenager, if I was to walk out of this room and get hit by a car, stand before God, I don't know if I'd be in heaven or hell. I don't know if I'd, I don't know where I'd be. But Andrew, would you pray with me so I can have a relationship with God? Walk in that relationship, have an assurance of my salvation. Come on, friend. Nobody's looking around, just me. Say, Andrew, include me in that prayer. I want you to shoot up your hand just right now so I can see it. I ask you to put it down. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Over the very back, thank you. Who else? Thank you, thank you. Who else? You're saying, Andrew, that's me. Over this side, who else? You're saying, Andrew, that's me. Show me. Thank you, friend. Who else? You're saying, Andrew, that's me. Thank you, thank you. I see those hands as well. Who else? Maybe you're sitting here thinking, should I or shouldn't I? Fred, how do you think the devil's going to come and talk to you? Do you think he's going to be like some cartoon character standing before you in a red suit holding a pitchfork? No. He's going to whisper to you. He's going to say, don't you do it. You tell him not today. Today's about me, my life, my miracle. Something's going to shift for me. Come on, friend. Practice what you know. Give God this moment. Lift your hand. One more time, I'm looking. Who else? You're saying, Andrew, that's me. Thank you. More hands are going up. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else? Thank you, thank you. Who else? You're saying, Andrew, me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Every person that lifted your hand, or maybe you didn't, but you know you should. Could you do me the honor of just lifting it one more time, just so I can see? In fact, I like to count. The reason I count is because I believe God counts. He sees everything. Let me, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. At least 50 people. Come on, let's give God a big clap and thank Him. Oh, come on, Rock. Let's give God the, the biggest shout. Can we all stand? We're going to pray this prayer together. I want you to put your hand on your heart as we pray. Because I believe that's what you're opening your life up to. Opening 
This prayer is like a gateway prayer to your heart. The Bible says when you pray this prayer, the old person goes and the new person comes. What's that about? Your old spirit's gone. And a new spirit, God's spirit comes into your life. You're born again. Come on, pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, tonight I'm asking you into my life as my Lord and Savior. God, I give you my life. I give you total control. Help me live for you every day in your presence. Forgive me for any wrongs, for any sin. Because I know you died on the cross to take away the sin of the world. Take away my sin. Today, I am a child of God. I want to pray for you. God, I thank you for every person that lifted their hand or prayed the prayer online, prayed the prayer in this room, didn't lift their hand, but prayed it with sincerity. God sees everything, friends. God, I pray you touch their lives. Lord, I thank you that your promises as a child of God is that you remember our sin no more. That we are your children. We're a part of a family, the family of God. And this house is the house of miracles, the house of blessing. Everything is going to change. Everything is going to turn around. God, I pray that you would help us practice what we already know to be right. God, we thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God some praise in this place. Isn't he good? I'm so proud of you.